right, Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates like KMAV, 99 KMSR, and the Mightier 1090. Maybe you're listening on podcast, replay on Sirius XM, or maybe you're video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside, and if not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. Sunny day here on Delmarva, a little bit humid, but that's okay. I'll take it. It's going to be another busy weekend, as it always is in the world of professional wrestling, with the biggest event being, of course, AEW Full Gear coming up this Saturday night from the Kia Forum in Los Angeles, California. Filthy Tom Lawler will be joining me after the break, and we'll run down the card and give our predictions on what we believe is going to take place. But before we can get to Saturday, we have to make it through today first. AEW Collision will not be the lead-in for the pay-per-view tomorrow. The traditional zero-hour YouTube show will do that. As a result, AEW Collision will instead be the lead-in for Rampage tonight on TNT. And if you're an AEW diehard, this is your kind of night. You get to snuggle up in your bed or on the couch or wherever and watch four hours of AEW programming First, two hours of Collision, an hour of Rampage, and then finish that up with the Full Gear Countdown show, which airs immediately following Rampage. And if you don't like AEW, don't worry. WWE SmackDown is also live tonight on Fox, and we'll let you know what they have planned for that show. CMLL is also tonight with their weekly Friday night show from Arena Mexico. And there's a lot of other things they get into as well, including the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame. It has seven new members, and we'll let you know who they are a little bit later on in the show. Mike Sempervivi here. Filthy Tom Lawler will be joining me. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sempervivi here with you. You know, we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want us 24-7, you can find us on Twitter or X or whatever you'd like to call it. I'm at Sempervivi. You can follow Filthy Tom Lawler at Filthy Tom Lawler and Sports Byline USA at, very creatively again, at Sports Byline USA. We don't try to fool you with any nonsense there. I'd also like for you to make the wrestling news part of your day because there's no nonsense there either. It's just everything you need to know from the wrestling world to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite wrestling review pod like Dave and Brian on Wrestling Observer Radio. It is daily free and between 5 and 15 minutes long. No clickbait, no speculation, no rumors, no paywall, just the wrestling news for more information, you can head on over to TheWrestlingNews.com and at WrestlingNewsAV on Facebook and Twitter. Filthy Tom Lawler, who did not join me last week as he was cheated out of a victory against Fred Rosser in, in Texas. Filthy, will we go with that? But cheated out of a lot of things this past year. I would not say a victory over Fred Rosser, however, was one of those things. He actually, to his credit, pinned me fair and square in the center of that ring with a counter hold and i don't know mike you know you fight the same guy over and over again eventually you lose your motivation a little bit after putting the beat down on somebody for so long how much more do i really need to prove by facing fred rosser over and over i extended my hand in a show of appreciation for his efforts in a show of dare I say respect, we shook hands and then I remembered in my head Suzuki and Nagata. They shook hands a few weeks ago and then what did they do? They whacked each other in the face and I said, there's no way I'm letting those old curmudgeons, those old crabs get away with it. And not me and Fred. So I gave him an old whack right in the face. And uh, he did the same to me. And while I said I'm sick of fighting this guy, he then called me out in his post-match promo for a match that he wants to take place in Japan. Good luck, buddy. Are you the booker? <laughs> Are you Gato? What's going on, huh? Hmm. I got to be honest. I also saw another uh, post-match promo. And I don't... I know we haven't talked 
since we were on the show last and everything, and I don't want to upset you or anything like that, but uh, it seemed to be that uh, Hoyce, Royce Isaacs, and uh, Jarrell Nelson seem to be a little uh, frustrated with what's been going on recently. Can you address that? They have every right to be frustrated. The results have not been there for either myself nor the West Coast Wrecking Crew in the New Japan Pro Wrestling banner. I heard a rumor that they were spotted on another professional wrestling show of the American variety, a taping maybe. So they're they're giving it a shot in another federation. We'll see if they can get some results maybe next week. But they have a few points. Things have been better in my career in the past, Mike. And maybe I need a, a little bit of a change. And we'll see what that ends up being i can tell you that there has been a little bit of change in my plans because up until maybe a month ago i was not on the mlw roster but i have now found myself back in their ring and i will be there at the 2300 arena tomorrow night where i will be bringing in a mystery partner to take on the Bomaye fight club amongst many other Great matches. Fatu, always must see. He's challenging Alex Kane for the MLW world title. But I'm bringing in the biggest, baddest, nastiest, filthiest boy on the, on the scene. You guys are going to get a look at a real superstar under the WTF banner in MLW after tomorrow night. So... I promise that. Things are, uh, I, you know, MLW, way back, Brian's been having this thing with what show are we going to watch because NWA TNA is killing him. And at the time NWA TNA was out there, there were not a whole lot of American options to the WWE. There was Ring of Honor, which if you lived in the Northeast, you might have been able to see, or if you were a, a videotape collector, but it was difficult to watch them there. But MLW was one of the promotions that kind of sprouted from that. And Satoshi Kojima was the first ever MLW champion. Him and Taiyo Okea came over from all Japan and would work MLW shows. And you're facing him on December 7th. Man, you are getting ready to be uh, curmudgeonly and old like uh, Suzuki and Nagata when you slap around one of their ilk again in, in Satoshi Kojima. That's the key word there, again. <laughs> Satoshi Kojima, who I have already defeated when I defended my New Japan Strong title. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, a, we'll unveil, we'll pull down the curtain a little bit on kayfabe. But I wrestled that guy in Port Wyneme, California, a New Japan Strong taping, I think two days after one of my PFL fights, I flew home. I gathered my stuff, ordered a reverse hyper off of Rogue Fitness with my earnings. <laughs> well, maybe I put it together. I can't remember. And then I drove to Port Wyneme and I put a beat in on Satoshi Kojima on short notice. And this time I've got a few weeks to prepare. And I swear to you, Mike, if this guy flies off the top rope and drops that elbow across my ding dong like he did to CM Punk I am going to burn every piece of bread in the Philadelphia metro area that includes all the Steven Star restaurants I'm breaking in there and I'm burning up their bread I'm going to Herman's and I'm taking all the tinned canned fish and I'm dumping it out into the sewer to make the place smell a little bit better and then you pop, pop in then, people regionally. Then after I do all that, I'm gonna bury Kojima right down in the dirt and the dust where he belongs. Right down there, alongside all the other dead things like Becky Lynch's Jeopardy score. Tom, did you hear about that one? I did. I did, Mike, and I have a bone to pick with the people out there who have been promoting this, and I would have been one of them. I thought Becky Lynch 
while she did set a record and through the first 60 clues came up with answers for none of them, she did answer a few questions right. She did get on the board. Unfortunately, she finished in the negative. However, since this is Celebrity Jeopardy, they gave her a chance. And Mike, we will see if you can answer some of these questions. Do we have time right now? Well, we got we have about, you know, we might as well wait for the the next segment on that because I'm actually interested in hearing this because look, I you know, there was the show Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader and one of the points of the show was the fact that there's a lot of knowledge that you acquire in your life that you just kind of forget about and it goes by the wayside and when you're on stage in front of a bunch of lights in front of a bunch of people being timed for your responses i could see how some people would you know not do very well and i'm interested in knowing was that the case with becky lynch or well, not only that not but know a whole lot as a world traveler i can tell you that there's one thing does not translate across cultures, and that is any sort of slang. So if there's any slang terms, much like the, the regional dishes and restaurants I was mentioning earlier to the Philadelphia metro area, if there's any slang terms that people are not familiar with, it becomes very hard to come up with an answer. And as a non-native United States Indian, Statesian, <laughs> an American? I, I'm sure there's a lot of differences in uh, her upbringing and what we have over here that, you know, we kind of take for granted. Well, good. I'm willing to take this challenge. I want to take the challenge. Am I smarter than Becky Lynch with these Jeopardy questions? And don't worry, everybody. We took care of all the housekeeping going on in the life of filthy Tom Lawler there in the first segment. Don't worry. We're going to be getting to everything that's going on in the world of wrestling that's got to do with AEW, that's got to do with WWE, and it's got to do with maybe even a little bit of Japan if we have time for that. And the Newsletter Hall of Fame, too. Got to get to those guys as well. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, BB Filthy, Tom Lawler here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Just completely muddying up your airwaves right now. Jeopardy, Becky Lynch did not go well this week. I don't know if anybody out there heard about this or not, but she was on Celebrity Jeopardy, I believe, with who? Macaulay Culkin and who else? Was it Rachel Dratch from Saturday Night Live who was on there, Filthy? Definitely Macaulay Culkin. I I don't know the lady that was in the mm. middle. Bottom line is... Becky Lynch failed miserably from what all reports were. Uh, apparently, what was said was she didn't get any right, and you're saying that that's not correct? She that's, actually... Yeah, that's incorrect. And she actually did get a question right after the fact. They gave her a chance, like, hey, you look like you kind of know it. And she got it right, so maybe it was just trepidation on the old buzzer. But, Mike, I have here one of the categories very tough to find episodes of jeopardy online but i have here one of the categories six degrees of actual bacon <laughs> are you ready okay this was a real category this is the real category for 100 100 dollars all right mozzarella is in a caprese salad with tomato and tomato is with bacon in this three initial sandwich. What is a BLT? That is correct. She got that wrong? But she didn't answer. <laughs> Did she just sit there like this? Like, like you know, and the, like, what's... <laughs> I don't want to take away views from the Jeopardy YouTube <laughs> account, so she can right. for yourself. Question number two. Mayo is in egg salad with hard-boiled eggs, which are with bacon atop this salad, first served at L.A.'s Brown Derby. Okay, say, wait, hold on. Say that again. Mayo? Mayo is in egg salad with hard-boiled eggs, uh -huh. which are with bacon atop this salad, first served at L.A.'s Brown Derby.
what has eggs and bacon in a salad? Cobb salad does, I guess, but mayo too? I didn't know mayo. I, I that no is idea. correct, Mike. Cobb salad is the answer. Does that have mayo in it? I don't need Cobb salad. Appa- I don't. According to, uh, what's this guy's name? It's definitely not Alex Trebek. With but Ken we'll go Jennings. with him anyways. Ken Jennings, that's right. Milk is in custard with eggs, and eggs are with bacon in this quiche named for a region of France. Lorraine. That's correct, Mike. Three for three. Well, I worked at a restaurant, too, so that probably helps. You're out. apparently smarter than everybody that was <laughs> on this episode of Jeopardy so far. <laughs> Wait a second. You had two Americans and an Irish woman on there. The two Americans should be able to get any bacon question, you would assume. I would, at least. Macaulay Culkin doesn't strike me as a big bacon eater. Yeah, well, that's 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 true, probably. Which leads me to this next question. All right. Tomato sauce is in Sloppy Joe's with beef. And beef is with bacon in this beloved Wendy's burger introduced in 2007. Baconator? That is correct. <laughs> Thank you, Granny. Thank you, From Wendy's. Bacon eater to baconator. <laughs> and the final question, we'll see if Mike can go five for five. Sugar is in jam with fruit, and fruit is with pancakes and bacon in this classic IHOP dish with a kooky name. Broody Tootie Fresh and Fruity. Ding, ding, ding. Five for five. Mike Sepervivi, the king of bacon. At least on these airwaves. Look at that. I and cannot believe people did not get those. Those seem you, like that just shows you how much Jeopardy truly has fallen from the olden days. They're not asking you about Shakespeare or anything like that. It's questions about bacon. And apparently nobody's even getting those. The final question, which ironically they all got right. Exhumed in 2017 to settle a paternity suit, his mustache had preserved its classic 10 past 10 position, according to the Spanish press. Salvador Dali. Who is Salvador Dali? That is right. Thank you. Mike, you may have missed the boat. Really? Really? Really, my brain Probably wrote not. this on on bacon needs. I need to be. You know who needs to host one of those? There needs to be like some sort of food jeopardy hosted by, I don't know, the you know Guy Fieri or you know Nigella Lawson or something like that. I'd be all about that. We should That's probably a, talk about more wrestling. Yeah, fine way before to pass we get time a, on a, a complaint. <laughs> Well, from the frying pan into the fire, I, I guess that would be a good enough of a transition. Uh, some people uh, who argue about the Hall of Fame, boy, they're in a fire right now because they're upset that the Young Bucks are not in or the Roman Reigns isn't in. But the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame inductees for 2023 have been revealed in the newest edition of the newsletter, which is up on the front page for subscribers Sergeant Slaughter, Tomohiro, Sergeant Slaughter, Tomohiro Ishii, Blue Panther, George Kidd, and the teams of Antonio Rocca and Miguel Perez, Jack and Jerry Briscoe, and the beauty pair, Jackie Sato and Maki Ueda, are all inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Jack Briscoe, Rocca, and Sato were already in the hall for their singles work. Once again, no entry from the non-wrestlers category this year, Filthy. I think everybody was talking about and everybody was debating, at least many people were when it came to the modern era. A lot of people thought the Young Bucks were a no-brainer to make it into the Hall of Fame, and a lot of people were arguing about Roman Reigns but figured he would have a very good shot of making it as well. They both did quite well, where in the future you could see them in the next couple of years easily making their way in. But were you surprised by anything that was announced this morning in the newsletter? I guess I was most surprised by the inclusion of a man whose towel actually lays right behind my shoulder, and that is one stone pit bull. The other Tom in the New Japan Cerulean Blue, Tomohiro Ishii in the Hall of Fame. This is a win for professional wrestlers, for workers everywhere, because 
He has not been positioned as a top star, despite his popularity here in the U.S. He's not one of the guys winning major championships in Japan. He's had a long career using basic professional wrestling moves and still having some of the absolute best matches and performances on the planet. And like I said, it's not a traditional induction into the Hall of Fame, but it's one that I fully support as a fan and also a professional wrestler myself. Ishii makes it in. The beauty pair makes it in. Shingo Takagi does not make it in, but finished in a way where, much like I said about the Young Bucks and Roman Reigns, it's very likely that he is going to be in, possibly, and in my opinion, probably as soon as next year. They are kind of two peas in a pod if you look at them, but once you see how they split, Ishii was picked by the fans to be a, a star for New Japan because of his consistency, because he was an underdog. And it's almost like the first part of his career everybody has forgotten about because of the performances in the G1. And I think in some of the same ways, I don't know if people give Shingo's work in Dragon Gate enough credit and how important he was to that company. But then he comes over to New Japan, gets seen by uh, a number of new people with new eyeballs, and he has not missed a beat as well, including cl including being given the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, which, again, does not get handed out to everyone. That's one of the things that, you know, Ishii cannot put in his cap is having the IWGP title. But uh, Shingo can. Do you see Shingo going in next year? Do you see Shingo as just as strong as a candidate as Ishii, considering that you've had, again, close enough uh, chance to see him? Let me first say, Mike, if I could, I think that Roman Reigns, of course, will go in. I don't know when. I also think the Young Bucks will go in, but I think people are kind of looking at the future of AEW and how that kind of turns out in the long run to determine the Young Bucks' place in history because they could come away with one of the most favorable views from fans, pundits, insiders as being catalysts for providing an alternative to WWE, a long-term alternative, I think, is the key here. Uh, that could really, you know, boost them in the future. So I think it kind of depends on that to a certain degree. To me, I don't know if Shingo will get in. Maybe he'll get in in 15 years when people realize how great he's been and how really revolutionary and influential he has been on a number of workers. We've talked about his time just being in Dragon Gate as the top guy and Dragon Gate kind of having a different style. Well, Shingo also has his own style because not only has the guy been a top-level cruiserweight while being a bruiser and a powerhouse, but he also kept up the speed. He's now become a credible heavyweight, and he's carried the company in a dark time. And if Ishii is in the Hall of Fame, I think Shingo deserves to be right there, shoulder tackling against him. We'll talk about the rest of the Hall of Fame as well as AEW Full Gear when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi, Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. It's a filthy Friday here on Wrestling Observer Live. Only if you could hear what goes on during the breaks. But we'll leave that to the side. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame uh, was put up today in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter. I assume, I safely assume... I, I failed last week, so I think I'm right this week. Dave Meltzer and Garrett Gonzalez will be doing Wrestling Observer Radio. That should be up on the website for subscribers tonight, talking all about this Hall of Fame. He will be on with Brian as well, that being Dave, on Wrestling Observer Radio after full gear, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, running down that show. And I'm sure, even if Brian doesn't want to, talking a little bit more about the Hall of Fame. Um... Antonio Rocca, Miguel Perez get in, Tom, and I know this is way more up my alley than yours, but I just want to bring it up to point out that they should have been in last year. 
they should have been fiated in by Dave, to be honest with you, the same way I'm thinking at this point, Bobby Davis and Morris Siegel probably should. But it, it was fixed, and they're in now. And for fans of the Young Bucks or the Briscoes or the Bulldogs or the Steiners or whoever it might be, but especially the Young Bucks, I wouldn't sweat it too much. There are not a lot of tag teams in the Hall of Fame. There are very few tag teams that were imported and inserted initially as tag teams. You know, Bruiser and Crusher and Mudo and Hase and, and Hanson and Brody and the Funks. Those guys were in individually. And there weren't a whole lot of tag teams that were in the original round. The Dusick Family Riot Squad, which, you know, helped develop tag team wrestling across the, the country in the in the 40s. The Fabulous Kangaroos and the Road Warriors, that, that's that been it. The Freebirds had to be voted in. There was a lot of banter in 2009 when the Midnight Express made it in. Should they be in? Same thing in 2014 with the Rock and Roll Express. Took till 2015 for the Assassins, one of the greatest tag teams in the history of professional wrestling to make it in. The Sharp Brothers, so integral to, to, to Japanese wrestling, didn't make it in until 2017, so... I wouldn't sweat it too much. It just seems to be much like in the business of professional wrestling, tag teams kind of get put down a little bit, which drives me nuts because I love tag team wrestling. But the reality is it doesn't seem like there are as many people out there that put enough weight on tag teams in the, in the way that I do. I don't know how you view that. I love tag team wrestling. I like anything that's different, similar, but different. Right, I like all the different rule sets in mixed martial arts. I like watching fights in a cage. I like watching fights in a ring. And I think tag team wrestling, both in the traditional two-on-two -two and also trios formats, provide something different for the viewer. And I am a big fan of traditional tag teams who stay together and do their best work as a duo i thought the steiner brothers while i truly enjoyed big papa pump in wcw i mean how can you not like a guy coming down to the ring with some sexy ladies and a tiger <laughs> i thought that the steiner brothers were the best work of either guy's career the road warriors were awesome and i think it just adds a, a layer of drama that you don't always get with singles wrestling that really you can't get i hate to say it in some instances so tag team wrestling done well is amazing mike yes sir. you mentioned the young bucks mm -hmm. who are some other modern tag teams that you think are hall of fame worthy are there any i would say the usos should be would, a Hall of Fame tag team, in my opinion. I think the problem with the Usos will always be hamstrung by a, a, the same thing that a lot of WWE guys are hamstrung by, which is they're up through that system, and there are going to be people that Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, the Usos, because they didn't go anywhere else because they didn't prove themselves anywhere else i think people may discount that there are people that definitely discount the briscoes and the young bucks for never working in wwe and never being on that stage there are people that hold that against listen, them i listen, i gotta be listen, honest listen. i don't think good anybody who says that and you could say whatever you want about jack briscoe but jerry briscoe's performance under the wwf banner those were Hall of Fame worthy against Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson. His work as a stooge oh, solidified it. It didn't put him over the top. He was already there. The Briscoes are a Hall of Fame tag team. Well, but it, there's icing on the cake. Well, I will not we... hear any stooge slander well, on these airwaves. None of that went into why he's in the Hall of Fame now. None of it. Not Not even a little lick of that stuff. But... You know, I think the Usos, I don't I don't think they have 
a strong case. I mean, I honestly, I love the Usos. They're one of my favorite tag teams, certainly of the era. I think if you drop them against the Motor City Machine Guns or Mark and Jay or anybody, that they're going to perform. They would be just fine. I don't think that there would be that big of an issue. But I also don't know if I would put them ahead of Mark and Jay Briscoe. And I don't know if I would put them ahead of the Young Bucks, and I think those are the two strongest teams from this this era that certainly are on the ballot. I mean, you can add in the Moto City Machine Guns, you could add in Marufuji and Kenta, you could add in Hero and Claudio, which was one of my favorite tag teams, but the reality is I think there's two. It's the Briscoes and it's the Young Bucks, and I, I think it's going to be tough for anybody to hurdle them and get in, and they're going to have to clear a big hurdle, I think, to get in themselves. Obviously, that's the case. Most certainly, the Briscoes are going to have to do it. The Young Bucks are probably going to make it in at some point. Looking at what the Briscoes got, you know, total-wise, it's going to be a lot tougher for them. Yeah, I would not disagree with what you said at all. Uh, As far as the Briscoes and Young Bucks being Hall of Fame-worthy candidates. However, I do think the Usos deserve their credit. Uh, Jay Uso has done... And Jimmy Uso has done a good job, too, as well. Uh, on their own, I think that they've actually stood up quite well when you look at their performances as individuals over the course of the past few years in this Bloodline storyline. I think they really have carried the WWE tag division, and I think they are going to go down as far as accolades go and when they write history in the yearbooks it will go down as them being the greatest tag team of all time in the WWE. I believe Usos that. in the New Day. And I, mean, I the think... New Day are, it, absolutely are well, going to have their people that say in that time that they should be yeah. added into that equation too. Well, they should be. If you are the biggest act in that division, in the biggest company in the world, while they're grossing an insane amount of money, you should be looked at as a Hall of Famer. Well, I mean, we're in the era of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. There are very few people that can move a needle. There are very few metrics, and that's what came up a lot during the Hall of Fame discussions that people would have, where it's how do we judge some of these metrics now? It used to be easy to see who moved house or ticket sales. And again, yes, Roman has been able to do that. That's one feather that's in his cap. But, you know, to me... There are a lot of other things, I think, now at play where uh, how you promote yourself, how you utilize social media, how you build your up your own brand. I mean, I think a lot of that stuff also plays a part. That's one of the biggest things that the Young Bucks have on their side is look what they were able to do from a merchandising point of view. One of the things people hold against and they didn't go to WWE, they never had to be put in a place where they had to go to WWE. And they would have, look, let's be honest, until wwe came sniffing around for them and omega and those guys when they were leaving new japan and they were trying to get them how do you think that they would have been treated in the in the world of wwe look at tag teams you know much more revered by wwe standards and what the young bucks would be and how they were treated a lot of the time so they made the right decision and in my opinion and what they were able to do and how were they were able to parlay it you know, again, that's something that should absolutely be a feather in their cap. And there, there needs to be a balance, too, with guys like a Roman or people who excel in the WWE system. Yes, it's the big machine, but how do you operate inside that machine? Cody Rhodes in the next couple of years if he makes it onto the ballot. And we're going to see this, I think, with next year's ballot. There's going to be a lot of people from this era now on the ballot, and we saw none of them get in. And it's going to be interesting to see. Because Becky Lynch, you can make a great case for Becky Lynch to be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, a great case. And people have made that case. Like, and if Roman Reigns doesn't make it in, who makes it in? Like, at that point, if if he doesn't make it in, can anybody possibly make it in if he doesn't? So there's going to be a whole lot of discussion. And it's just interesting moving forward. Like, objectively, how could you put anybody in if Roman Reigns isn't in there? Right? Mm -hmm. There's so there's you know, a big daddy what, fan you, in the UK maybe, right now saying that same thing. Maybe you would put in uh <laughs> maybe you would put in NXT's future superstar, the the Mercedes maker, Okada. <laughs> well, hey, 
speaking of Mercedes, we do have to get to this uh, before you run out of time here. We're rapidly doing that. Who will the mystery signee be? We know it's not you. Will it be Mercedes? Will me. it be Will Ospreay? Who, will it be Goldberg? Who is going to be Tony Khan's big signing on Saturday at the Full Gear Show? My initial thought was Mercedes Monet. However, it seems the general consensus now has moved to it being Will Ospreay. But could it be both? It could be both. It could I'd be a like number of people. That. I think the key is that it says all the fans know and respect this person. Do they all respect that dastardly Will Ospreay? Well, we know David Finley does it. We remember that quote, right? No. Was, <laughs> so. He's only smarter than Flip Gordon. It's <laughs> CMLL. <laughs> CMLL's own Flip Gordon. He's gonna, Flip hey, Gordon. he'll be in the main event tonight. But, hey, the pre-show match, MJF and his mystery partner against the Guns, who you got? Roddy. Think it's going to be Roddy and they hold on to the titles? Or do it's got to be him. Gun take him. It's got to be him or Samoa Joe, for storyline sense. I think whoever it is, I'm hoping the Guns win the belts just to take him off MJF, and we can be rid of that kind of scenario there. Hook against Wheeler Yuta is expected to be added for the FTW title. Could you see a title change there? Yeah, why not? Do it. Give Hook another feud to go with, and I think it's good for both of them. Tag title four way. Big Bill, Ricky Starks against FTR, against the Kings of the Black Throne, and LFI, Dolistico, and Roosh. What do you do? I think the belts stay on Ricky Starks and Big Bill. But I hope we get an FTR-LFI feud out of this. Let's see what happens with Harwood and Roosh tonight. I'm looking forward to that. AEW TBS title three-way, Chris Statlander, Sky Blue, Julia Hart. I'm going with Sky Blue in the big upset. Hmm. I'm going to go Julia Hart in the upset there, to be honest with you. Young Bucks, Golden Jets. Oh, that's that's a tough one. I think the Golden Jets win. Texas Death Match, Adam Page, Swerve Strickland. Hangman. Adam Page. Hangman. Adam Page, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, music's up here. Got a couple more matches to go through. We will get to those on the other side. So remember, you better be scribbling these down so you can put them on uh, whatever the, the betting site there is. Uh, what, which one do they use? Uh, draft Bow Dog. Boat. <laughs> Boat. Calvin Air, what a man. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, BB, Filthy Tom Lawler here to put a bow on things. But first, we got to finish up with our predictions for AEW Full Gear Saturday night on pay per view from the Kia Forum in Los Angeles, California. Filthy AEW Women's World Title match, Hikaru Shida against Tony Storm with Luther with the Lufa. I think they're pulling the trigger. I How think. can you not? Unfortunately, Hikaru Shida just seems to be stuck in this role as like a transitional champion. Like we need someone credible to get the belt on. She's going to end up with 300 title def wins <laughs> and like zero defenses. She looks, she's going to be always somebody you can rely on every single time for that company but she'll probably never get the due that others will tony storm i think does win this belt we gotta have something with her and mariah may that probably leads to the finish and ends up screwing sheeta out of the belt six-man tag team match christian cage luchasaurus nick wayne against copeland Al allen and sting flair kind of disappeared from the advertising but who do you got the heels. Nah, yeah. you know, I don't know. You don't have to switch a title, so maybe the baby faces send them home happy. Yeah, I don't know. I'm actually thinking the heels win that one. We'll see. I think uh, it may even be Nick Wayne getting a ceremonial yeah. pin over somebody. Yeah. AEW International title, Orange Cassidy, John Moxley? I think Orange Cassidy gets the win. I think the story has been set up for him to overcome the odds. Although, now that I say that, I'm starting to think maybe it needs a little bit more time to flesh out. 
I'd love to see Moxley win the title, take it uh, to one four, and then have that mingled in with the uh, New Japan belt. So just so we can get rid of some of those and get them out of the way. But the AEW World Title, MJF and Jay White. I mean, MJF, right? I think so. I think MJF is keeping that title at least until there's Adam. <laughs> Back and we go scene. from thinking so to knowing so, knowing the show is over right here and right now. Filthy, I want to thank you. Producer Daniel, I think I want to thank you. And I and I guess that's it. Producer John on video as well, too. Ladies and gentlemen, Big Boss Man Brian Alvarez will be back next week. Wrestling Observer Live.